And this is I Hear Things for Friday, July 16th. Is podcasting a slowing market? Well, this one's going to ruffle a few feathers, I think. Maybe we've gotten a little too comfortable with the prevailing narratives around podcasting. But listeners are never comfortable. Listeners shuffle and stomp and gamble and gyre. Magpies in search of shiny new content, always. Entire industries can be disrupted based on the actions of one company. It only takes belief. When Netflix dropped every episode of House of Cards on the same day, the TV networks weathered the storm by telling themselves that full-season drops were unsustainable, they couldn't keep doing it, and that people would be back. Netflix, of course, retaliated by dropping full seasons of all the things all the time, and there was always something new every weekend in great quantity. Netflix gained an incredible head start on all of their network rivals by radically changing customer expectations and just moving the goalposts for TV programming forever. And today, the leading networks, they've all launched compelling streaming services. Some of them are quite good. But they're still all playing catch-up because Netflix completely pushed the goalposts forward and changed what people thought TV was or could be. Well, podcasting, too, is being disrupted, and it's been right in front of us for a couple of years. At least one recent report, in fact, says the medium is slowing, and I'll get to that in a minute. But first, a word about shaving. It's a summer Friday, and to be honest, I didn't shave today. If I did, I would have used a razor and a blade from Harry's. And no, this is not an ad for Harry's. Most people have a preferred brand of razor or blade that they use, and you may or may not have a strong loyalty for yours, but it's at least a default choice for you. The one in my suitcase is from Harry's, and it has been for almost 10 years. I jumped on the direct-to-consumer subscription bandwagon uh, pretty early, an introvert having to ask the clerk at CVS to unlock the razor blades from a bulletproof case was, to say the least, a process ripe for disruption. The whole direct-to-consumer industry has been very important to podcasting, and vice versa, I'll say. You know, if it weren't for podcasting, many Americans would still be sleeping on straw mattresses with a few old newspapers per cover, or maybe even sleeping standing up. But no, podcasts taught us that we needed mattresses and sheets and sleep aids. And finally, I've corrected all the sleep mistakes of my youth. If you looked at the top brands by DTC subscription sales in, say, 2013, you would probably have seen Harry's right near the top. Today, however, you would not find Harry's at the top of a DTC sales list. If you only looked at their direct subscription sales by year, you might find that Harry's growth rate had slowed, maybe even declined. And you might be tempted to say that the brand itself might be declining as an investment, maybe even the whole DTC category. But walk into your local CVS or Target today and stroll through the shaving aisle, and there it is. A whole display of Harry's razors. Harry's is bigger than ever. Even as it looks like they could be shrinking or slowing as a subscription brand, because they realize that while people subscribing to an automatic razor blade service was a great audience to start with, there was an even larger world out there of people just browsing the aisles, maybe not yet loyal to any brand, but they might give Harry's a try. So subscriptions, they might slow, they might even decline, but overall sales go up. To really measure the success of Harry's, you have to change your yardstick. All of that takes me to this. Pod News, Hollywood Reporter, Billboard, I'll drop the, uh, the links in the show notes, and a whole bunch of other trade publications reported this week that an influential media analyst at Alliance Bernstein downgraded Spotify from market perform to underperform. And that's how this particular strain of, hope, of uh, Homo sapiens says hold and sell, by the way. Uh, the report contains some criticism of Spotify's overall strategy, and I'm, I'm not going to comment on here on any of that. Spotify is a client, and it's not really germane to my point. But I'll comment on this part. The report claims that Spotify has overinvested in what they call, quote, a slowing market. Their evidence, a decline in, and I'll put this in my own quotes, listening year over year, according to PodTrack's June figures in 2021 versus June 2020. I have many thoughts about this. First, I'll echo what James Cridlin, the editor of Pod News, wrote about uh, in, his, in his take on this on Thursday. And he said, and I quote, 
Bernstein quotes pod track figures as evidence of this slowing market, saying that in June, listening sank 16.5% year on year. However, pod track doesn't measure Spotify's podcasts, and it's notable that the top 10 publishers in Triton Digital's latest podcast report for the U.S. measuring May versus May shows an 11.4% growth in downloads. And he also mentions a, a bug in Apple Podcasts, which has hit, I think, everybody a little bit. Let's be absolutely clear about what PodTrack and other leading download measurement services do. They provide an IAB certified methodology to count downloads, not listening, from participating companies. For those companies who do participate, PodTrack figures provide them with a reliable third-party metric for how many times their media files were requested from servers the producer controls, and that's it. They do not measure listens. They do not measure non-participating companies. They do not measure audience. They do not measure YouTube. And they do not measure Spotify. I think most listeners to this podcast and other keen industry insiders, they know this. Download measurement services measure what they measure, and they do it well. By no means am I denigrating them, or certainly not denigrating PodTrack. They, they're built to measure downloads, and they do it well. But I am challenging how these data are interpreted, and what this means, really, for how the industry is changing. Here's what I do know. The audience for podcasting grew a ton between 2020 and 2021. Weekly podcast listeners, surely the most regular consumers of your content, grew 17% year over year, to around 80 million Americans 12 plus. The weekly audience has doubled in five years, and the number of podcasts those weekly listeners consume has also increased over the last five years. Now, I take it as fact that the downloads pod track measures went down from June to June. And I, of course, trust our 15 plus years of podcast audience research implicitly. The audience is growing fast. How can both be true? Well, here's the Occam's razor and not Harry's razor explanation for this. Downloads and audience are two different things, and they are not as strongly correlated as you might think, at least not today. In fact, the correlation gets weaker and weaker. In fact, as the audience for podcasting grows through platforms like Spotify and YouTube, which do not generate download metrics, the percentage of listens from downloads is shrinking. If you only looked at downloads, sure, you might think things are slowing down. But, you know, a few shows ago, I commented on some data from our podcast consumer tracker. This is from the first quarter, uh, where we asked people, what is the platform or service you use most often to listen to podcasts? Apple Podcast app on iOS was at 23%, Spotify at 22%, and YouTube at 18%. And these are percentages of humans, not percentages of of podcasts. So Apple Podcasts, which distributes downloads, is still number one at 23%. But YouTube and Spotify, which do not generate download metrics and are not counted by any download measures, are together much larger than Apple. And that's changed very quickly over the last few years. Throw in Pandora and a few other platforms that stream or progressively download podcasts, and we are very close to seeing about half of the weekly audience for podcasting telling us that they prefer platforms that download trackers do not measure. And by the way, yes, I understand the technical distinction between downloads and progressive downloads and true streaming. The point I'm making here is that what we call and measure as downloads is the content you yourself have control over. It's on a server you own or fractionally lease. You can wrap the URL for your content with a tracking code. You control your RSS feed. But what is growing is the consumption of podcasts on servers you don't control and can't append tracking URLs to. It's in the cloud. Well, there is no cloud. It's someone else's computer, probably Spotify's or YouTube's. Now, this is not a podcast about anybody, quote unquote, killing the download. I'm not interested in killing the download. I'm just telling you what is. What I am saying is that Spotify and YouTube do not run on the download economy, and they are increasing the total audience for podcasts. Subscribing to a podcast download is like subscribing to get Harry's razors shipped to you every month. That's a good business. But Spotify and YouTube are the CVS and the target in this analogy, and they are selling a lot of podcasts to people who otherwise might not have even listened to one 
let alone subscribe to one. And by the way, the last three podcasts that Spotify cut big, exclusive deals with, Joe Rogan, Caller Daddy, and Armchair Expert, are all in the top 20 most listened to podcasts in our latest podcast consumer tracker data, which remains the only service that measures listening to everything, including Spotify and YouTube. Those are some pretty big shows not to have on your yardstick if you're measuring the growth or decline of podcasting. Now, you could successfully argue that those three shows are no longer podcasts with a capital P and a trademark, and purists might agree. But you don't get to decide that. The listener decides that. To think otherwise is just exactly like telling someone that the Harry's razor that they bought at a Target isn't a razor anymore. Well, good luck with that. If it looks like a razor and quacks like a razor, it's a razor, regardless of where or how you got it. But you should return a quacking razor. Like the razor market, to truly measure the success of podcasting, you have to change your yardstick. Downloads may shrink, they may grow, they may be flat, but they are less important today than ever. It's just a fact. The growth of podcasting over the last few years has not been tied to the download. Now, having said all of that, let me emphasize, I believe in the download. It's what makes podcasting special and different, and that matters. Now, I'm giving a keynote at Podcast Movement in a, just a few short weeks, in the beginning of August, my first foray amongst the peoples since last March. And I'm going to talk about the two options that today's podcaster has to grapple with all of this, and at least one of them fully embraces the download. I'm not trying to kill anything. More on that when I see you there, hopefully, in reality or in virtuality. Uh, by the way, I'll also be revealing the most listened to podcasts in America by those who say they use Apple Podcasts the most often to listen to shows, by those who use Spotify the most, and by those who use YouTube the most. And when you see these lists, and I will have them in the newsletter, when you see those lists, how big the shows are, and how different they are, I think it's going to be a head-slapping moment for a lot of you. Ten years ago, a decline in downloads might have signaled the end for podcasting. We are far from that end. The fact that podcasting is growing, even if downloads may not be, well, that's a sign that the medium is strong and not weak. This has been I Hear Things for Friday, July 16th. Make sure you subscribe to the newsletter at tomwebster.media. You can also buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash tomwebster. Uh, no podcast next week. I'm headed to the great northern woods of Maine for a little R&R with my son. But I'll be back in a couple of weeks, and I hope to see you soon, if not in Nashville. Take care.